Who's ready for more triangle proofs? I know I am. So today we're going to talk about ASA and SSS, which are what I'm going to call two other shortcuts for proving triangles congruent. But what I want to show you is that if you have ASA, you only can get one triangle out of that. Now, the problem is we have this activity up here, which is really hard to do digitally, but I'm going to try anyway. It says on a piece of Krabby Patty paper, draw a line segment, label it AB. If you were in class, I would give you a piece of paper that's literally called patty paper because it goes in between hamburger patties when you freeze them. But I can't hand that to you. And it says create a 30 degree angle at A, a 50 degree angle at B, and then see if you have the same triangle as somebody else. So one way I could do that is I could say, all right, here's a line. I'm going to call that AB. If I put a 30 degree angle here at A and a slightly bigger 50 degree angle here at B, and let's say I know that's seven inches long, once I have the 30 and the 50 on either end, I would just extend these lines until they intersect. Okay, fine. But then if my neighbor just used a four inch line and a 30 degree angle and a 50 degree angle, they would still intersect, but it would be a smaller triangle. Okay, so does knowing two angle measures guarantee that the triangles are congruent? No, I need more than just the angle measures. If, however, I stretch this four out to another seven, I would guarantee that my 30 degree angle and my 50 degree angle would make the same triangle as I had before. And that's ASA, because I have two A's, two angles on the ends, and then the side in the middle. Okay, so you need the length of the side between the angles, okay? Cool, cool. So we have just established that knowing two angle measures and an included side, included between them, will prove triangles congruent. We have also shown that just having AA, that's not good enough. Okay, if I just have angle, angle, and no side, I can't go anywhere with that. All right, so we just proved that ASA is a thing. When you have two angles, and the included side of one triangle, and they match two angles in the included side of another triangle, those two triangles are congruent. What's important is the side is between the angles. Okay. So let's do a proof with that. All right. So when we go through and do proofs, what you want to make sure you're doing is first look at your givens and say, okay, they give me that M is the midpoint and they give me some congruent angles. I'm supposed to prove that these triangles are congruent. Well, I mean, that's, that's good. They look congruent, but I'm not convinced yet. The only way that we can be convinced that these triangles are congruent is if one, I prove all three sides and all three angles for both triangles match up, but that takes a long time. Two, I use SAS, the shortcut from before this lesson, two sides in the included angle. Or now three, my third choice is by doing ASA. Now, I'd prefer not to do that first one. I don't want to find all three sides and all three angles. So what I'm really looking for is can I get to SAS or ASA to prove these congruent? Let's find out. So step one is restate your givens. So M is the midpoint of HP. And angle H is congruent to angle P. Notice I changed this equality to a congruence. That's totally okay. All right, that's given. Now, once you restate the givens, you want to look at those and see if they lead to anything else. So given that M is the midpoint of HP, M is in the middle of H and P, that would make HM and MP congruent. So HM is congruent to MP because midpoints, can't write here, midpoints create two congruent segments. Okay, can't get anything else out of that because all I know is that M is the midpoint of HP. I don't know anything other than that. So I'll stop there. Then it says angle H, this thing right here, is equal to angle P. Angle H is congruent to angle P. Oh, 
But that was given. I don't need to write that again. Whoops. Okay, I mean, that's helpful, but but there's nothing else I can really do with it. So once you've exhausted the usefulness of your givens, then you want to transition to the usefulness of the diagram. When you have what I like to call bow tie triangles, these things, if you look at them, they kind of look like a bow tie, you always have vertical angles right here in the middle. I'll call those angle one and angle two. Vertical angles are always congruent. Nobody needs to tell you that they are, they just are. Angle one is congruent to angle two because vertical angles are congruent. And then when I look at this picture and at what I've marked congruent, I have an angle, I have another angle, and I have the side in between. That's ASA. That's the thing we just talked about. So now that I notice I have an ASA orientation, I can say that these two triangles are congruent by ASA congruence. And what that congruence really means is, hey, these two triangles have two angles in the included side marked congruent, so that's enough to say that the entire triangle is congruent to the other entire triangle. All right, let's come down here to number two. So in number two, we are given that BAC is congruent to DCE, AC equals CE, and BC is parallel to DE. Okay, well, they restated the givens for me, so I'm just going to write, you know, given. And now I'm going to go through and go through the usefulness of the givens. BAC is congruent to DCE. This is congruent to that. Important, but it doesn't really lead me to anything else, so that's expired its usefulness. AC equals CE. Good to know doesn't really lead me to more information. BC is parallel to DE. Okay. Parallelism isn't congruency, but it leads to congruency. And if you skip back a couple pages, um, let me find it. It's page, nope, this one, page seven. You will see that on page seven, I said, when you see parallel, you want to look for corresponding angles, alternate interiors, or same side interiors. And I got to tell you, it's usually alternate interiors. And then after that, maybe some correspondings that you're going to see. Okay, so now I'm going to look back at this one, if I can find it again. Sorry, you get to watch me page through here. Ta-da! All right, so these parallel lines, let's see. Do I see any alternate interiors? I do, but my alternate interiors are here and here. And that one in the middle, it's not part of a triangle. So that's not really helpful. What else I see though, and they're very hidden, is these guys. I see, I'm gonna call this angle one and angle two. I see that angle one and angle two are corresponding angles. And parallel lines create congruent corresponding angles. Okay. Cool. Oh, and if I look at those triangles now, I see A, S, A. I have ASA marked. That means I'm done. That means that I can just say after one new step, A, B, C is congruent to C, D, E by ASA congruence. So we've done SAS, we've done ASA. Now there's one more. There's SSS for this one. Now, this has got some writing on it. Let me try to make the writing go away. Pretend you don't see this. Do, 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 do. Whoop. Okay. SSS is another one. What if you don't have any angles? That's okay. Side, side, side is good enough. All right. So if I know that AB and A prime B prime are congruent, BC and B prime C prime are congruent, and AC and A prime C prime are congruent, even if I don't have any other angles, that's enough. Triangles are rigid. In my description, my um, justification for this is everything is built with triangles. If you've ever seen the Epcot ball, the Epcot ball is built out of triangles. If you ever look at a bridge, a bridge is built out of triangles. If you ever go into like unfinished parts of your house, your house, the, the um, 
beams and stuff are built on triangular um, buttresses. I don't know if that's the right word, but we're going to call it that. Those are all built on triangles because once you build a triangle, it doesn't move. Once you have the three lengths, it's not going to move at all. So SSS is enough to build a triangle. So if I come down here and I don't know anything about the angles, but I can find all the sides, then the triangles have to be congruent. So given AB, that would be this thing, is congruent to XY, that would be that thing. Whoa, okay. Hang on a second. I'm trying to think about this, and these overlap. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to redraw these. When you have overlapping triangles, sometimes it's a good idea to redraw them. So here's YBA, there's that triangle, and here's YBX, that one. Okay, now I can see two very distinct triangles. Cool. So now let's go back to those givens. AB equals XY, and AY equals XB. So AB equals XY, AY equals XB. Cool. But those don't really lead me to anything else. I just have congruent sides. So now I need to look at the diagram. Well, if I look at this diagram, and if I look at the original diagram, these things overlap and they share something. They share YB. This is another application of the reflexive property. Sometimes reflexive property are where things butt up against each other. Another thing for reflexive property is where they overlap and slide over each other. So YB is part of both of those triangles. So I'm going to use the reflexive property. Reflex. Can't spell. There we go. So YB equals YB. And look at that. All my sides are marked. So now I know AYB is congruent to XBY by SSS. Ta-da! Okay, one more here. So on number four, it says we are given that BA equals ED. Okay, that's helpful, but doesn't lead to anything else. C is the midpoint of BE and AD. Okay, so C is the midpoint of everything, which means this is going to equal this, and that's going to equal that. Ooh, that's helpful. Prove some triangles congruent. Okay, I can do that. So I have my givens, and then we just said, based on the word midpoint, Midpoints create congruent segments. I have two pairs of congruent segments, segments formed by that midpoint. I know that BC and CE are congruent. And I know that AC and CD are congruent. And the reason for both of those is that midpoints create congruent segments. Whoa, my screen shrunk there. Midpoints create congruent segments. And look at that. All my sides are marked off. Fantastic. So I have SSS. I can prove these triangles congruent by SSS. And oh, they didn't give me the last part. So it looks like we're going to have to fill in the blank. So if I call the first one ABC, ABC, now I have to figure out what angle would correspond to angle A. Well, this triangle on the left turned 180 degrees to make the triangle on the right. So if I turn that, A would end up at D. So A and D correspond together, which means that B and E correspond together. And C lines up with itself. So ABC is congruent to D E C. And with that, I'm done. So there is your lesson on A S A and S S S. And hopefully, these triangle proofs are starting to make a little bit of sense to you. With that, I'm going to sign off. Have a great day.